Hey all, Heba here. So today we are diving into quite a complex subject actually, uh, and it is the subject of XP. So uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page here, I just want to, uh, you know, bring out there that there's different XPs in the game. And uh, what I'm talking about in this video here is what we call base XP. And uh, that's not really shown in the game except for the uh, team result screen. Uh, which is the one with the green circle around. That's the base XP and that's the XP we're talking about in this video. Uh, the other screen is uh, from my stats screen and there's a red circle around the XP there. That's not the XP we're talking about. The XP with the red circle around has different bonuses attached to it and um, it cannot really be used to compare between players. For that you will need the base XP and like I said that's only shown in the team result screen after a battle. So uh, the XP in this game is actually incredibly complex and uh, I'd say actually very impressively done. Because uh, if you go up to tier 7, all ships at tier 7, they sit at around a thousand XP, uh, give or take 50 XP. That's within 5%. Um, that's quite an achievement with all the different ships we have in the game and all the different play styles and all the different builds you can do. It's actually quite amazing. And uh, XP is an aspect of this game that doesn't get the attention that it really deserves because this is really, and I'm talking base XP here, this is really the only measure uh, that you can use to compare between players. So uh, if we take a look at my own personal uh, you know, scoreboard here, then uh, of course in a win and a loss you get different amounts of XP because if you win a battle you automatically get 50% extra XP, although you didn't earn it. And uh, that's why the uh, XP that's available in the statistics screen is uh, unusable because it includes that bonus and it also includes premium bonus and uh, yeah, it's just useless. Uh, what we need to look at is the base XP. So uh, the XP numbers here, they only apply to the uh, post-battle screen, screen, like I told you, the team screen, not the personal screen. And uh, like less than 500 base XP in a win, that's a pretty horrible effort. And uh, less than 300 in a loss, that's uh, also very, very bad. And uh, then it goes you know, to 1,000, between 1,000 and 1,500 in a win, 700 to 1,000 in a loss. Uh, and all the way up to uh, 3,500 in a win, which is an exceptional effort. And uh, 2,500 plus in a loss, which is also an exceptional effort. And uh, what you really should be doing in this game is getting the highest amount of XP you possibly can get. Nothing else really matters. Kills don't matter. Damage doesn't matter. Uh, like, it's all about playing the objectives, doing what you're supposed to do in the ship class you're playing, and uh, then maximize the amount of XP you can possibly get out of it. Now it's obvious many people struggle with that and if we look at the community average base XP here, which I've taken for uh, five ships, I got that from Wargaming directly. I have a lot more numbers but unfortunately I'm not allowed to share them with you guys but um, that's just too bad. Anyway, if you look at the community average base XP of Atago is 1070. Let's just say that again, 1,070. Hippo is 977, Edinburgh just around 1,000, Iowa 950, again 950 base XP for a tier 7 Iowa. Just let it sink in. Udachi, 1082. And then for comparison, I put my average base XP here again. And remember it's base XP, it's not the statistics XP that's available in the statistics uh, in the game, obviously that's a lot higher. Uh, so for example, at Targo, I am about 700 or about 70% uh, higher than the average player. And uh, that's my Targo B, uh, which has never had any uh, you know, premium ship bonus uh, applied to it. My uh, normal Targo is more than 2000, but I think that must be because that it was available back when there was a, another bonus attached to the premium ships. Anyway, uh, the other ships, are uh, not premium, so except for Udachi, but it never had the bonus either. And they all sit around 1625, 1650, whatever, like something around those lines. And uh, I suppose that's pretty decent. 
So uh, what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that the average player sits in the disappointing area. Actually, uh, some of them all the way down in the bad area. And I mean, it's not surprising. And uh, also the average XP is a little bit misleading because some people, you know, play this game maybe three, four, five battles in a tier seven ship. They do awful and then they never come back. So uh, they might, you know, pull the average down and that's just something we can't do anything about. Uh, only Wargaming can, you know, weed out uh, those uh, things that, you know, make the results not completely trustworthy. But this is still the best we have. So uh, how do you make XP in the game? Well, it's very simple. Damaging and sinking enemy ships, including destruction of planes. Capturing and or defending objectives, or in other words, playing the objectives. Spotting enemies and spotting torpedoes, and of course, uh, planes as well. Uh, allies damaging ships that you spot, and uh, those allies should not be spotting that ship themselves. Potential damage, we'll get into that later, and uh, something as simple as just movement. But, like I said, the XP area is really complex, and uh, on the other hand, if you just do what was in the previous screen, you will get good XP. So in this example here, let's take a Hippo, and let's say, just for the sake of argument, that it's worth 100 XP. Say someone gets in a really lucky salvo with a battleship, and takes 90% of his hit points, so uh, leaving him with only 10% left, uh, they will then get 90% of the XP, which would be 90 XP in this example. And it's just an example, I don't know the actual numbers, no one does outside Wargaming. Then let's imagine that some noob sails by and gets a lucky shot and removes the last 10% of the hit points from that same hippo, and uh, will then pick up 10% of the total XP because he sunk the ship. Uh, which would give him 10 XP. He would also get 10 XP for removing the last 10% um, hit points, by the way, so the calculation is a bit out here. But anyway, <laughs> you get my point. <laughs> so, the uh, point here is sinking ships uh, doesn't really give you a lot of XP. This is also the reason that more experienced players and players who know how the game works tend to have a good laugh at people on Facebook or Reddit or whatever who complain about kill stealing because it doesn't matter at all. Um, damage or the percentage you remove off a ship, that's what matters. And uh, let's just take another example here with two tier 8 ships, each worth 100 XP. One is a battleship and one is a destroyer. Of course the battleship has way more hit points than the destroyer, but uh, what really counts is the percentage that you remove, not the actual numbers. So uh, imagine that you shoot at both ships and you remove 90% of the hit points from each. So uh, for the battleship that'll be like approximately 50,000 damage points, quite nice. For the destroyer let's say that'll be about 10,000 damage points. But both ships will reward you 90 XP, uh, considering they're both worth 100, because you did 90% of the damage to both of them doesn't take into account that you actually did a lot more, actually five times more damage to the battleship uh, because it just has more hit points. So please keep that in mind, very important. Now this gets further complicated when you consider the tier of the ships. Because I say you're in a tier 7 ship and uh, you do 90% damage to the tier 8 battleship and you do 90% damage to the tier 6 battleship. But uh, because the tier 8 battleship is worth 100 XP and the tier 6 is worth only 50 XP because you are a tier 7 ship, um, then you will only uh, get 45 or 46 XP out of the nicer now while you get 90 XP out of the uh, Friedrich der Große. And uh, that's despite you doing about the same amount of damage in raw numbers, but because of the difference in tier, you are rewarded more for doing damage to the tier 8 than you're doing to the tier 6. So I hope that makes sense. Um, it can get a little bit complicated, but uh, that's the nature of the beast here, boys. All right, we're moving on to capturing and or defending objectives. And this is where the player base really suffers. Like so many people don't understand um, the basics of domination and uh, also epicenter. Like it works pretty much the same way. And uh, like one solo cap, meaning uh, if you capture a capture point by yourself that's worth 
two thirds of uh, like sinking a whole ship. So uh, it's incredibly valuable and do not underestimate actually playing the objectives. The easiest way to play the objective is just to sail into uh, a cap with your ship and uh, turn it blue or green, anything but red really. <laughs> and that's it, you will get heaps of points for doing that. And uh, so many people just don't do it. Another thing that will reward you a lot of XP is keeping the enemies from capturing points, uh, which is like part of the defending objectives. And that can be done simply by just staying in the cap uh, along with an enemy ship and uh, blocking them from capping. That's worth a lot of XP. I don't know exactly how much it's worth, but it's worth a lot. So if you can't do that, do it absolutely. And uh, that works as well if you are, you know, sitting in a cap that's already taken by the red team, you will still block their tickets and you will still just break in the XP. Another valuable and quite obvious move is to just move your ship into an enemy cap, you know, make it uh, your cap, flip the cap, and uh, that's worth heaps of XP as well. Next up is another way to defend the cap, and this is a particular sore point with the community. Uh, I see this happening a lot. Uh, if there's an enemy ship, inside a cap and they're in the process of capping, you have to shoot that ship uh, and you have to shoot all ships that are in the cap and are in the process of capping because that means you will reset them. And uh, that is super valuable and uh, it's usually more valuable to reset a ship than to sink a ship. And uh, it's a lot of XP. And uh, every time you do it, you will even be awarded with a green uh, you know, icon there. and. Uh, that means that you've done well and you can rank, like you can get a lot of these. I've, I've been into the 40s and 50s of these and uh, it's worth a lot of XP. The thing with this is that you have to shoot at the enemy ships before they cap. Uh, that's the only time you will be rewarded with the green uh, icons and that will also give you more XP. If the enemies like, manage to take the cap and turn it red, uh, then it doesn't matter. Then if you fire on the enemy inside the cap, you will just get XP for the damage you're doing. Like it's very important that you shoot at the enemies while they are capping, you know, before they have actually flipped the cap into their color. Super important. All right, next up we'll talk spotting. Uh, that's a very easy way to make XP, and it really just means that uh, if you are the only one spotting uh, an enemy ship or your one of the ships spotting, and you will be awarded XP. That's it. That's all you have to do, and uh, it is very easy to do in a destroyer because of the low concealment. And uh, that's pretty much the main role of a destroyer anyway. So uh, on top of that, if someone else shoots at a ship that you are spotting and no one else is spotting, you will get XP for that. And uh, in this case here, the other cruiser is behind the mountain. He can't see the red cruiser, but you can. And uh, you're keeping that ship's ship spotted and the other cruiser is shooting at it. Of course, you can shoot as well. Uh, but you will be rewarded uh, XP for the damage that the other ship is doing to your target. Now, uh, spotting isn't just limited to ships. Uh, also, torpedoes are very important to spot and they give a lot of XP if you spot them. Uh, radar, you can use that to spot ships. Sonar in the middle can spot ships and torpedoes and uh, planes can spot ships and torpedoes as well. So a uh, sonar is very useful and very valuable and most people don't use it to its fullest. All right, to add some more complexity here, uh, it also matters what ship you are playing when you are spotting an enemy ship. As you can see here, I stole this for Wargaming. Um, if you're playing a cruiser, you will be rewarded more XP and more silver for spotting an enemy ship than any other class of ship. Uh, destroyer second, carrier third and battleship uh, and the last place. So uh, what does this mean? Well, it's the game trying to nudge you into doing what's good for your team and uh, spotting enemies in a cruiser is very valuable. Uh, exactly like, you know, tanking damage in a battleship, which you can see, but we'll get back to that later. So uh, what is granting high XP numbers is what you should be doing in this game here. and. Uh, you know, it's it's fairly obvious. Of course, it comes with risk. You know, I mean, no reward without risk. Like tanking damage is, you know, risky. And spotting enemy ships, especially in a cruiser, is risky, but you're also rewarded for it handsomely. 
So let's look closer at potential damage here. And uh, potential damage really means that, you know, any torpedo or shell uh, passing your ship or even hitting your ship uh, within a certain radius will count as potential damage or, you know, wasted effort on the enemy team's part, really. That's what it really means. So uh, the more shells you can tank, and it doesn't matter how you tank them, if you're a battleship, you can just, you know, catch shells on your armor and, you know, just be done with it. Or you can play an agile cruiser and you can dodge and weave. It doesn't matter how you do it, but the more people shoot at you, the more XP you will get. And uh, that's one of the really big uh, advantages of playing agile cruisers. I have to put a little commercial for agile cruisers in here, right? <laughs> so uh, just keep that in mind. It's very, very valuable. So uh, I always see cruisers right when the battle starts. They usually find a rock and they hide behind it. And uh, that's not what you're supposed to do. That's not what the game is rewarding you for. Like, you are supposed to dodge shells and uh, spot enemy ships. That will give you the most XP and also absolutely is the most dangerous thing to do. But it's what helps the team the most and it's what is then rewarded the most. So again, let's have a look at the potential damage here. And it's also different per ship type. Again, battleships, they get the most XP just for tanking damage. Like you just have to sit there, bow on and uh, not get citadel, really. Um, that's it. And uh, cruisers are the next one and then destroyers. And of course, um, carriers the last place because you don't want to be uh, tanking damage in a carrier. <laughs> All right, next up, I'll just touch quickly upon diminishing returns because uh, it means that the more you do of one action, the less XP you will get. So uh, for example, if you sink a ship, you will get 100% of the XP you were supposed to get for sinking that ship. If you then do the same thing again, and these I just made these numbers up, I don't know the actual percentages. Uh, second ship, you will only get 90% of what you got for the first ship. And the third ship, you will only get 50% of what you got off the first ship. So uh, as soon as you get above three ships, that's kind of my uh, like personal calculation. Uh, it starts to uh, not really be worth it to sink more ships. Of course, you should do it if you have the opportunity, but uh, it's better to go and do other things like capping or spotting or well, you name it. There's so many things you can do. And uh, this is just, this is not only for sinking ships. It, uh, I think it applies to most uh, things you can actually do in the game. So for example, if we take uh, the two commanders here, um, you know, Müller and Lüchens. Müller, he got a Kraken and a high caliber, and that's it. He did a lot of damage and he sunk five ships. On the other hand, Müller sunk only two ships, but he kept two solo caps. He defended 10 times and he spotted four ships. And uh, in terms of XP, uh, Müller will actually win this battle here uh, because the Kraken and the High Caliber, it doesn't award as much XP as, you know, doing a lot of things. Uh, and like I'm saying, spread out, you know, do a little bit of everything uh, or do a lot of everything. I don't, I don't care. But as long as, you, as long as you do everything, that's where the XP is hiding. Uh, it's not just about damage this game here. That's only part of it. So in the end, if you can do all these things in a battle, and uh, do them well, then you will get out of that battle with a good, healthy amount of XP and you will have helped your team. And the best thing you can do is, of course, to do all of these things every battle. All right, I hope that, you know, gave a little bit of clarity. And if not, just uh, throw me a comment. And uh, if I don't know the answer, I'll ask Wargaming for you and uh, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you out there.